So everybody, we are here. We have the privilege and honor of speaking with one of the Braxton sisters, Trina Braxton, one of our favorites. Trina, we've talked about you so much on our uh, TKIF Thank Kemp It's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> .com. Everything from your relationship to the music and all of the good stuff. I mean, you're, you're definitely one of our favorite sisters. Thank you. Thank you so much. For, I appreciate it. Trina, I mean, the, the, yes. you know, the second season is over. Can we expect a third season of Braxton Family Values? Well, you know, I can't divulge but so much. But the only thing that I can say is keep your DVR set to Thursday nights at 9 p.m. on WeTV. But that's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's a good sign. Can you, can you at least tell us if Tony has decided to sign on to be a part? Because I know that this past season, she really wasn't as involved as the first season. Will we see a little bit more of her in the third season? Well, you know, I can't speak for Tony, but, you know, as we know, Tony has been a veteran in the music industry for 20 years now. Yes. And I'm sure she didn't wake up one morning and say, oh, I think I want to be a reality star now. You know what I mean? So it's like, uh, you know, everything is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she, she's already seasoned in, in her craft and in her career. Yes. And even though we as a family, as the Braxtons, even though we have, we've had a taste of gold status, it, of course, is not the same as what Tony has reached. And, you know, it, it's like we, we have somewhere that we're trying to go, and Tony's already been there. Yeah. So, you know, you, you can't fault her for, you know, for not wanting to be as much a part, you know, because, you know, of course, you know, she has to protect her brand as Tony Braxton. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. But, Trina, you know, because, you know, this is brought, I mean, first of all, we, we, we do remember the sisters from the Braxtons when you guys released um, your album and music and things like that. Um, yeah. But with the success of Braxton Family Values, has this really changed anyone besides Tamar? Because we know Tamar is a little extra. But besides besides <laughs> her, anyone else in the family has you know has changed because of the success? Um, it can't help but to change you to a certain degree. I mean, not to make you a completely utter you know B I T C H. <laughs> However, you know, but it does change your life. You know, because you know there are people that are coming up to you and wanting your autograph and wanting to take your picture. And, you know, or people wanting to come to your home or sending things to your home address and trying to find you, you know, your life does change to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. However, you know, you also have to remember that it's because of the fans that, you know, you've reached a certain goal setting. So you can't forget where you've come from at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you, got, you have to try to find a happy balance. I mean, especially for you, Trina, because, you know, you know, we, we see a little bit of everyone's life, but we really got into your life this season um, with, with um, your relationship with Gabe and with your music and also with um, your, your, I don't want to say alcoholism, but your issues with alcohol. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not afraid or even embarrassed to say that, you know, that I potentially had a serious problem with alcoholism. And if I didn't have the support, you know, of my family and my friends, it could have really turned into something nasty and ugly, mm -hmm. you know, and it was as a result of my tumultuous relationship with Gabe that I, I decided to self-medicate, you know, because sometimes we decide that we want to, you know, live under covered wagons and we don't want to let people know about things going on in our lives and, you know, we want to keep it a secret or, you know, oh, you know, this is happening in my life, this is happening in my relationship and, you know, I don't want to share, you know, what's going on, but you know what, there's nothing wrong with sharing. Mm -hmm. I have learned that that can be very, very therapeutic yeah. and I feel like if I had, you know, decided to talk about it early on, I wouldn't have decided to self-medicate. Mm. Do, do you think you're an alcoholic? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I can control it, blah, blah, blah. You know, and people say, oh, I'm different, I'm different, I'm different. You know, but I, I can say it could have gone there. Mm -hmm. It absolutely could have gone there. You know, I'm not one of those people. I wake up first thing in the morning and I have a drink and, you know, I, I put vodka in my cereal, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, had I not been very careful or had I not been prayerful and had my mother and my family not been praying for me, mm -hmm. it absolutely could have very easily shifted into that direction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'm the first to recognize it because it, it was a downward spiral for me. Okay. And, you know, uh, the, the good thing and the blessing is I had a praying mother <laughs> <laughs> and Evelyn. a supportive family. Absolutely. 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 So, you know, I mean, you, you spoke just a little bit about the Gabe situation, and I don't want to really do, delve into rehashing everything that we saw this season with Gabe. Um, mm -hmm. But I do want to, to utilize um, what happened with Gabe as something that you can teach our listeners um, from what you learned during that experience. Are you and Gabe officially divorced, separated, what? 
Uh, we are officially legally separated. Okay. I did file for a divorce. Okay. Uh, the divorce is not final. Okay. Um, we are in talks. However, you know, I, I find that it has been very, very easy to say to other people, if I were you, I would do this, or if I were you, I would do that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the truth and the reality of a situation is you'll never know what you do unless you're faced with that situation yourself. Um, I've found that it is not as easy now for me to give advice to other people mm -hmm. about their impending relationships or, or not their impending relationships. But, you know, at the end of the day, my life can be a testimony to other people, even if not to myself. Mm -hmm. And that testimony can either be, you know, you know, through, through prayer, you know, God helped salvage, salvage my marriage or through God, he helped me through my divorce. Mm -hmm. I don't know which, which way that testimony is going to go. Mm -hmm. However, you know, hopefully I'll be able to help somebody through the mistakes I've made in my life. Is there, and are, that's, that's what practice value is all about. Yeah. Um, is, is there any hope of um, salvaging this, this marriage? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, but I do know that I'm not going to rush into anything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it one day at a time. And if we do get back together, it's a, it's a decision that I have to live with and not anyone else. Mm -hmm. And if we don't get back together, it's a decision I have to live with and no one else. You know, but um, if, either way, no one wins on divorce. Do, no one wins. Do you think being a part of the reality show really highlighted the problems in your marriage? No. No. The problems that Gabe and I had were, were, were far before the reality show started. Okay. It just, some, but in, in some ways, it seemed that the, the reality show seemed to have exacerbated mm -hmm. a lot of the things that were going on. However, you know, when, when things are, are put under a microscope and they're subject to ridicule, you know, then, then you start listen to, listening to outside influences. Mm -hmm. And then you start listening to other people's opinions. And, you know, and when that happens, you, you kind of get mad all over again. Mm -hmm. And what I kind of had to do was separate myself from what was really my thoughts or the thoughts of others. Would you and Gabe consider doing that new VH1 show, Couples Therapy? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm um, not sure. <laughs> um, so, um, in, in regards to Gabe, is he still living with you? He is not. Gabe is no longer living in that family household. <laughs> he, he, he has his own place, you know, but, you know, the good thing is he is still very much a part of the boys' lives. Okay. And, That's you know, he is still a, a, a very involved parent with the children. And I'm, I'm really blessed to have that. How, how, how did the, the – because I know, you know, towards the end of uh, last season on Braxton Family Values, you, you struggled with um, having to tell them about, you know, the, the, re, you know, the resolution of this relationship. How did you break that to them? And what advice would you give to other parents that have to kind of let their children know, you know, this relationship is ending or we're getting a divorce? Um, well, to answer the first part of the question, it really wasn't easy, and I wanted to make sure that I, I spoke to the children about it before it was aired on television and, and they could hear it from their friends or, or, or from, a, from some outside source. Yeah. Um, one of the main things for advice I would give to another parent is to be honest with your children mm -hmm. um, because, you know, they, they can hear it from other people and they could get that information wrong. And the, the first thing that you don't want to lose is, number one, the, the trust of your, your children mm -hmm. and, and their faith in their parental units. Yeah. They should always know that they can come to their parents and that they can trust them with, with the facts, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, come what may. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I'm a firm believer in being honest with my children, even, even if it's bad, even if it doesn't show me in a great light. I was very, very honest with my children with what happened between Gabe and I and our relationship. Most definitely. Um, I, I, Trina, I have to say, uh, like I said, you know, a lot of our listeners uh, picked you as one of their favorite Braxton family uh, members. Um, <laughs> you know, what has been the fan reaction to you? I know because, I mean, like I said, a lot of your family issues um, played out on the show, you know, especially within your, your immediate family. Um, yes. You know, what were, what were some of the fan responses? Well, you know, a lot of my fans, especially my little boom booms on Twitter, hey, boom boom, <laughs> you know, a lot of my boom booms, they've been very, very supportive. And, you know, they would say things like, you know, I really hope you guys work it out, you know, between you and Gabe. Mm -hmm. You know, I really love you and your sisters. And they'll say, you know, 
one sister reminds me of my cousin, one sister reminds me of my mom, one sister reminds me of my sister, mm -hmm. or they'll say things like, oh, I wish I had sisters, you know, and it really makes you feel good because it, it, it makes you feel like they are almost a, an extended part of your family. Yeah. It's because they become so engaged, and mm -hmm. it's like they really feel like every week that they know what's going on in your life, and they want to ask you questions, and they, and they want to, to get a glimpse into your life, and it really actually makes you feel really good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm definitely glad to hear that. And you know, the main reason why we brought you here on Kempire Radio's TKIF is because you have new music out. You know, we 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 got a chance to see you perform on the Braxton Family Values and on this last couple of these last couple of episodes. Let's talk a little bit about that before we jump into your solo stuff. Will we ever get <laughs> the Braxton Family album? See, I, I thought like you were really trying to get me into trouble today. You were trying to get me to divulge all this Man, other oh, information. But, 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 but Trina, everyone's going to be like, okay, Cam, why didn't you ask this, this question? This is what we want to know. <laughs> That's my job. Um, well, I will say that you won't hear anything from us immediately. However, mm. we are in. there are some um, projects on the table that are being considered. Okay. Is That's Tony, all you'll get. Is Tony involved? They're being considered. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to get me in trouble. No, not at all. But one thing that's going to get you in trouble is this new song, Party or Go Home. All right. This song is fire. Everyone is feeling this song. You, you know, a bunch you. of your Twitter boom booms hit, hit me up and, and just talked so much about the song. We're going to play it here on the show as well. Um, first of all, how did, why did you decide this type of music, this particular song, and what can we expect? I know, it's a lot of questions. Well, <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people, and I'm not sure why, but a lot of people say that I am not a whole lot like the rest of my sisters. <laughs> they say, you know, I talk differently, I act differently, whatever the case may be. However, you know, I decided that I want to do my type of music my way. Yes. I wanted to do something that reflected me and my personality. The song is very bubbly. It's very fun. Mm -hmm. It just makes you want to get up and dance as soon as you hear it. It's very engaging. It wants you to become a part, a part of the party, in the life of the party. And I think that it really exemplifies me and myself and my personality. Definitely. And you know, at first it was very, very nervous thing to do, especially because it's the very, very first project I've ever done without the backing of my sisters or my family. Wow. Mm -hmm. I know, right? Because I've always had the Braxton's and to my left or to my right, it was always <laughs> one of my sisters. You know what I mean? And like this time, you know, it's like, whoa, I'm all by myself, like cricket. You know what I mean? <laughs> and thank God I have their support. And I was just like, and when I finally did that performance, I was like, oh my gosh, my sisters love it. They love it. And they are my greatest critics. Right. So it's like before I even look to the fans, you know, I look to my sisters and my family first, mm -hmm. you know, and it's something that we've always done as a family. And I don't know why we did it. We just do. <laughs> but when I, when I saw their kind of like a okay look and saw their thumbs up, I was like, I can do this. I can do this by myself. Mm -hmm. And I just really, really felt like I needed their support to kind of drudge forward. Most definitely. And what, I, and I know you have this single out now, um, yes. but what can, is this going to be a part of an EP, an album? What, what are, what's coming up? Yes. It's going to be a part of an EP. Okay. Um, I'm not finished yet. I am uh, currently working with some other artists as well. Yay. Yay. Clap, clap. Um, can you tell us who? And well, I, you know, I'm not going to say, yes, I'm working with CeeLo. I'm not going to say that. Uh -uh. And I'm not going to say, no, I'm not. But I, you didn't hear from me. I did not put that out there. That is a rumor. Oh, that's a rumor. Okay. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> okay. So um, in regards to, you know, the song and things like that, anytime we have singers come here on the show, we've seen you, seen you perform on, on Braxton Family Values. We've seen you perform with your sisters. But we want to hear you raw, over the phone. Sing a little something for us, please. Oh, my gosh. Um, I don't want to R&B it too much because we all know that I am a retro pop singer. Yes, we <clears> are. <throat> but uh, let me say, uh, I guess I'll R&B it out for you guys a little bit. I'll put the phone away a little bit. Okay. And the rock is regular, the bones busted in us, get it through to the night. I don't know. Wow. And, of course, you chose one of the hardest songs to sing. Sorry. <laughs> no. Like it was hard. no, you sounded great. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, she went for that one? Okay, we'll go with that but one. But you put me on the spot. That was the only spot song I had just now. <laughs> when can we... Got some drink in my cup, taking me to my zone. How's that? 
Oh, that's hot too. That's hot too. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> when can we expect the EP? Oh my gosh. Um, I want to say by the end of the summer. Okay. Um, I've been working really, really hard. So uh, hopefully you guys will receive it well. Who, who have you been working with on the on this EP? Um. Like I said, I, I, I can't divulge all of the rumors. I can't say it's a rumor. I can't say it's true or false. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but I'm also still working with the other writers on uh, Party or Go Home, Peanut Johnson and uh, Jamal McGee. Okay. So um, I, I'm, I'm so excited. I, I'm literally doing cartwheels inside of my body. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm just hoping that you all will love it as much as I do. Most of, and we're excited. I mean, we're so grateful that you would even come here on Kempire Radio. Um, you're the first of the Braxtons to come on. I hope the rest of the sisters will come on as well. And speaking of the sisters, we really haven't talked about, we talked about Tony, we talked about, you know, everyone else, but we really haven't talked about your sister, Amar, the breakout mm -hmm. star of the show. Yes, yes. She, and she has her own reality show coming up. Will we see you or any of the other sisters on this reality show? Um, of course, we'll all make cameos, you know, but, you know, one of the great things about, you know, all of us being on WeTV is we've all become breakout stars because we are now the, the number one show on WeTV yes. in, in their history. Um, but as far as Tamar's uh, reality show is concerned, is you get to see a different side of Tamar. Mm -hmm. You get to see a softer side of her because when, uh. when you watch <laughs> Fresh and Family Values, you know, you see Tamar being rah, 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 Dungeons and Dragons, and you know what I mean? But on this part of her show, you get to see Tamar being a wife and, you know, taking care of her home and, and, and being an executive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, it's a completely different facet of her. Definitely. You know, when you're watching the television show, but not just with Tamar, but with all of us, you only see one hour of our lives a week. Yeah. You know, and, and we're all very, very multifaceted. So the good thing about Tamar's show and hopefully other spinoffs to come, you'll see different facets and different sides of all of us in our lives. You, you said other spinoffs. Are there other spinoffs in the works? Did I say that out loud? Yes, you did, Trina. Don't try and play coy. Who <laughs> put me on the program? <laughs> Trina. I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to say that out loud. Uh huh. <laughs> What's the big, biggest misconception about you or your relationship with Gabe? The biggest misconception about me is that I do nothing but drink all day. <laughs> mm. I am very, very into academia. Um, actually, my favorite pastime is reading a book. Okay. We would I never enjoy know, reading. especially with the song Party and, or Go Home. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, you know, but, but like I said, that's only one facet of me. Yes. I, yes, I enjoy going out. Yes, I enjoy partying. Yes, I enjoy having a good time. However, I enjoy reading a book. I, I enjoy academia, academia. I enjoy shopping. You know, I enjoy... You know, dancing and, and doing a, a lot of other things. I, I am doing other ultra, uh, entrepreneurial things, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it's not just a glass of wine for me. <laughs> you, and you know we used to play that snippet here on the show regularly about <laughs> you can have another glass of wine. <laughs> that, and, and let me tell you something, there is nothing wrong with an additional glass of wine, honey. It's just, <laughs> wine makes everything fine. However, <laughs> there is more to me than just a glass. You know, Trina, we also got a lot of new words from you during Braxton Family Values. And one of the biggest <laughs> phrases of this season was oral transaction. Oh, Lord. Um, first of all, a lot of people wanted to know, okay, you, you were kind of on the fence. Am I going to tell him? Am I going to tell him? But you kind of told him on TV already. So you um, had to tell him at some point. I did have to tell him. You know, but at the, at the same token... Um, I couldn't just sit there and say, oh, Gabe did this, oh, Gabe did that, oh, Gabe did the other, oh, Gabe Swanker is on the Internet, mm -hmm. and not display what I've done, because mm -hmm. then that's being a hypocrite. Yeah. I mean, now, mind you, I mean, I got a lot of flack for it. I bet you did. <laughs> what, I, don't, I don't really understand it. However, you know, I did get a lot of flack for it. However, you can't condemn one person and then try to act perfect. Mm -hmm. Did you ever you can't revisit do that. that oral transaction with that particular person? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. So there's no further you know, relationship? No further relationship. Is he still in the band? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, see, you're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> You have to, you have to, I'm not saying you have to wait and see, because I'm not trying to say there's season three, uh -huh. but you have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, but the, you know, speaking of speaking of the band, you know, you and Tony Tony had that big 
um, blowout about how she felt about your band. Yes. First of all, what was your your initial reaction, and have you guys kind of resolved that? Um, my initial reaction was it kind of hurt my feelings mm-hmm. because um, when we were at the table, she said something to me, and she said, "Oh, they should be playing behind someone like Christina Aguilera or blah blah blah." I was like, what? I'm like, I'm just as good as Christina Aguilera. What do you mean? (laughs) Why should they be playing behind Christina Aguilera and not behind me? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, That kind of broke my feelings just a little bit. However, you know, she's entitled to her opinion. And if I lived my life, even with my sisters, if I lived my life, you know, based on other people and what they thought and their opinions, Mm -hmm. you know, I would be, you know, walking around in circles all day long. At the end of the day, Trina's going to do what Trina's going to do. And that's just it. Well, Tony had a lot of opinions this season. Um, first, her opinion in regards to your band, but also her opinion to Tracy and her weight. I mean, first of all, I love Tracy, too. Tracy's one of my favorite characters. To me, she has some of the funniest yes. lines, both of you guys. Um, you know, what is Tracy up to? Is she starting that, that hair salon? What is she doing? Well, you know, we're hoping. We're hoping she does. Okay. Um, you know, Tracy lives in the DMV area. Yes. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Tawanda, myself, and Mom, we live in Atlanta, Yes. And um, I want to put my car in drive. And um, we don't really see her as often as we'd like. Okay. But um, so we're not kind of privy to everything she's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, however, we're hoping that she will follow through with that because actually Tracy's a really great hairstylist. Yeah, I mean, you know, I want I want to see Tracy do something. It, uh, because I know to I saw Tawanda recently doing backup for Tony. Are you still doing backup for Tony? Um, not as often anymore, only because I'm doing so much with my own project yeah. that it doesn't afford me any more time to really do things for Tony. Which is good. <laughs> right? Because I do need to step into my own. And it, it, like I said, it's very, very nervousing. And a lot of times I'll say, oh, no, I can't do it because I, you know, I've already, you know, promised myself to something with Tony. But now I have to start, you know, unpromising myself to stuff for Tony and yeah. doing stuff for myself because Tony's already Tony Braxton. <laughs> I'm trying to be Trina Braxton. <laughs> You know, spe- you know, speaking of Tony, what's, what's you know, because, you know, tonight we, we're, we're talking about siblings and, you know, what's the best part of, you know, of having siblings and what's the worst part about, about having siblings. But, you know, because you have a sister that's pretty much an icon, a legend, mm-hmm. what is the best and or worst part about being the sister to Tony Braxton? The best part is that she could give me and she does give me a lot of solid advice about their record industry. Mm. The bad part about it is she gives me a lot of advice about the recording industry. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Another bad thing is a lot of people, they'll, they'll try to, you know, compare you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and even though we are cut from a different, we're cut, we're cut from the same cloth, you know, and we have a lot of sounds that are the same, a lot of the tones that are the same, but we're completely different artists. We sing completely different genres of music. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's very sultry, you know, and she's just, very adult contemporary. I am very retro pop, very dancey, very mm-hmm. Trina, very eclectic. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I want that notoriety as Trina. And I'm sure Tamar wants that notoriety as Tamar. Because as, as you saw, you know, with Braxton and Family Tamar just kept trying to break out, break out, break out, break out. <laughs> you know, no, I can't be the background singer. No, I retired. No, I've done this. But I'm trying to be Tamar. 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 And to a certain degree, I get it. I yeah. get it. I'm not as, like, out there as Tamar is with my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I definitely understand what Tamar is saying. Have you heard um, Tony or, and or t- uh, Tamar's new music? I have. And your thoughts? I think it's fabulous. Tony's uh, single. Have you heard Tony's single, I Heart You? Uh, yeah, we've been playing it. We love it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I absolutely love it. We, I've actually performed it with her okay. a couple of times, okay. and I absolutely love it. I've heard Tamar's music, but I am not at liberty to divulge, you know, her stuff until she does first. You are such a good sister. <laughs> <laughs> so once, once she comes out and talks about it, and then I can come and talk about it behind her. I'm like Don the Baptist. Oh, okay, okay. Well, you know, I said my our question of the night is, you know, what's the, you know, because you have a lot of siblings. What's the best yes. part about having siblings and what's the worst part? The best part about having so many siblings is outside of the fact that I, I can't imagine my life without them. Mm. You know, they are your closest friends in the whole entire world. Mm-hmm. And they know everything about you. They know your deepest, darkest secrets, you know, and 
but the bad part about it is they know all your deepest, darkest secrets, <laughs> you know, and they know how to push all your buttons and they know what makes you the most upset and the most, you know, furious. Mm -hmm. But at the same token, they know how to pick you up and build you up mm -hmm. and they know the right things to say. And, you know, like I said, they are your closest friends in the whole entire world. If you have no one else, no other friends in the outside world, you always have your sisters. At least I do. Yeah. And I, I couldn't imagine the world without them. And, you know, I just can't imagine people say, oh, I have a sister, but we don't get along. I'm like, what? <laughs> as long as there's breath in your bodies, I mean, talk to your sister. Oh. <laughs> she should be your best friend in the whole world. You guys share the same blood, the same parents, the same life, the same background, the same memories, the same everything. That's your sister. <laughs> Have you resolved things with your dad? Because we knew that that, that was a, a, a sort of a sore spot with you. Of course it was. You know, you know, I am not only a product of, you know, divorced parents. I am a divorcee as well. Mm -hmm. Twice over, mm -hmm. I guess, so to speak. Um, and I understand how it is and how it feels for the children. Number one, I would never want my children to go through the crap that, you know, we have gone through even as adults. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing, you know, what, what a divorce takes a family through. Um, However, you know, with the estrangement of my dad at the time, the good thing is we're all working on it. We're working on mending. And like I just said before, as long as there is breath in your body, there is room for mending mm -hmm. and there is room for repairment. And that's what we're trying to do. We're working towards repairing. And the, one of the misconceptions, I think, from Braxton Time Guys, especially in season one, that my dad was not a good dad and he was not a good provider. Mm -hmm. uh, but that he was. Okay. When my parents went through a divorce, we were, we were already adults. We were already raised. We'd already been through college, except for me. I just got my degree. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> At least you got it. <laughs> and, right, but you know, but while but while we were in those formative years, you know, my parents were there, and they they were they were paying for college, and they were there, you know, making sure we had our cars and clothes and pools and you know and all that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. So he was a great provider, and he was a good dad. Mm -hmm. But it just seemed like when he and my mom went through their divorce, it just seemed like he just kind of divorced the family at the same time. And I can't speak for him, and I'm not sure if it was through embarrassment or if he was, you know, trying to decipher things for himself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the great thing is that we're moving past it, and we are looking towards rebuilding. Most definitely. Speaking of parents, Miss Evelyn, who was about to get married but didn't get married, is she still not, dating Doc, or is she dating anyone? You know, let her tell it. she is not still dating Doc. Mm -hmm. However, he seems to be around often, <laughs> and... <laughs> Think I think that he is, <laughs> he's trying to slow walk her down, if you ask me. <laughs> did, did, you, did you think that she was going to get married, or you knew, like, this is not going to happen? She's just not you know, this. In, in my heart of hearts and in my gut, I really, really felt like Mommy was not going to get married. Um, I just, I've been married, and I've been married twice, and I just know what it feels like when a woman is about to get married. I know what it's like when you're about to pick up your gown and your shoes and your gloves or your venue and your cake and your drinks and, you know, going tasting and... I was excited. Mommy just seemed to really hoo-hoo about you. Like